Social innovation has brought us life-changing gadgets, but not every idea is a success. In fact, some of the most ambitious projects have turned into eye-watering financial disasters, from billion-dollar missteps to ideas that were ahead of their time. These failures remind us that even tech giants can stumble. Here's a question for you. What's the worst tech flop you've ever heard of? Drop your pick in the comments. I'm curious to know. Today, we're counting down the 10 most expensive tech failures in history. And before we dive in, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more fascinating tech stories. Let's explore the costliest mistakes in tech history. Kicking off at number 10, we have the Amazon Fire Phone, a gadget that tried to set the smartphone world on fire, but not in the good way. Launched in 2014, this phone promised unique features like dynamic perspective, a 3D-like effect that was more gimmick than game changer. Its Firefly feature designed for seamless shopping on Amazon didn't exactly wow users either. But the real nail in the coffin? A limited app ecosystem and a hefty price tag of $199 with a two-year contract. Competing with the likes of iPhones, and Samsung Galaxy phones, the Fire Phone never stood a chance. Amazon's 170 million gamble fizzled out within a year. On the bright side, they bounced back with the Echo, proving even giants can learn from their flops. At number nine, the TSP IT migration failure of 2018 turned a simple tech upgrade into full-scale banking nightmare. The plan? Move millions of customer accounts to a new platform. The reality? System outages incorrect balances, and even customers accessing other people's accounts. The chaos cost TSP over 330 million in compensation, repairs, and fines. Not to mention the reputation. Customers fled, trust plummeted, and even the CEO had to step down. This serves as a cost reminder that when it comes to IT upgrades, through testing isn't an option. After all, no one likes finding someone else's savings in their account or losting their own. Sliding into number eight is the Blackberry Playbook, a tablet that looked sleek but forgot one key thing, essential apps. Released in 2011 to compete with the iPad, it lacked native email and calendar apps because apparently, those were important. Despite its impressive hardware and multitasking capabilities, the Playbook's thin app ecosystem and reliance on pairing with BlackBerry phones turned users off. And let's not forget the price. It was nearly as expensive as the iPad, but offered far less. BlackBerry lost over one billion on this flop. The lesson? Even the coolest gadgets need to be functional to succeed. At number seven, we have Web TV, the 1996 device that tried to put the internet on your TV. A brilliant idea in theory. Web TV offered basic browsing and email on your big screen, but it struggled with slow speeds and a clunky remote that made typing a nightmare. The real kicker? By the time Web TV arrived, personal computers were becoming affordable and Broadband was on the horizon. Why is Queen at pixelated web pages on your TV when you could use a computer? Microsoft paid $425 million for this idea. It would revolutionize home tech. Instead, Web TV became the awkward uncle of modern smart TVs. Hey, at least it walked so your Roku could run. And number six, the Sega Dreamcast was the console that had everything except timing. Launched in 1999, it boosted online gaming, top-tier graphics, and hits like Sonic Adventure. Gamers loved it for a while. Into the PlayStation 2, a gaming juggernaut with better graphics and DVD playback. Meanwhile, Sega struggled financially thanks to earlier flops like the Sega Saturn. Without strong developer support, the Dreamcast couldn't compete. By 2001, Sega had exited the console business, losing over 100 million on the Dreamcast. It's a beloved cult favorite now, but back then, it was a costly lesson in knowing when to quit the race. Halfway through, we've got the Sony Mini Disc, a device that promised better sound quality than CDs and tapes. Launched in 1992, it was technically amazing, compact, durable, and great for recording, but here's the problem. CDs were already winning hearts, and wallets. And to add the rise of MP3 players in the late 90s, and the mini disc became the middle child nobody wanted. Sony poured hundreds of millions into marketing, but even their futuristic designs couldn't compete with the iPod revolution. The mini disc now is a nostalgic relic, a reminder that 
being ahead of your time isn't always a good thing. Speaking of being on time, why not hit that like button and subscribe if you're enjoying this trip through tech history. And number four, the Intel Pentium FTIV bug of 1994 proved that even the smartest chips can have a little brain freeze. The issue? A flaw in the Pentium process caused errors in complex division calculations. For everyday users, it was barely noticeable, but for scientists and engineers, it was a disaster. Imagine doing rocket science and discovering your calculations are slightly off. Intel initially brushed it off, but after public outcry, they launched a massive recall, costing $475 million. It's a reminder that even computers can have bad math days. And hey, at least Intel didn't tell everyone to round up and move on, right? Coming in at number three is NASA's Mars Climate Orbiter. The 125 million spacecraft that became a cautionary tale in metrics versus imperial unit debates. In 1998, engineers from two different teams used different measurement system metrics and imperial, which led to the orbiter entering Mars atmosphere at the wrong angle. Instead of studying Martian weather, it became part of it in fiery fashion. NASA's loss wasn't just financial, it was a big hit to morale. The lesson, always double check your units because Mars doesn't do second chances. On the bright side, at least these mistakes didn't happen during a manned mission. Sliding into second place is Beta Max, Sony's answer to home video recording. Launched in 1975, it was technologically superior to VHS. Better resolution, sharper sound, but here's a kicker. It could only record an hour of content. A movie night? Not happening. Sony also kept the format exclusive, while VHS spread like wildfire by licensing to other manufacturers. Add in VHS support from uh, the audit film industry, and Betamax was left rewinded itself into obscurity. Betamax taught Sony a 500 million lesson. Good tech isn't enough if it doesn't meet consumers' needs. VHS may not have been fancy, but it got job done. And finally, at number one, we have the Apple Laser. The tech failure that proves even geniuses can stumble. Launched in 1983, Laser was supposed to revolutionize personal computing with its graphical user interface. A groundbreaking failure inspired by Xerox PARC. The catch? It came with a jaw-dropping price tag of $10,000. That's around $25,000 dollars today. For that much, you would expect it to blow your coffee too. And in slow performance, buggy software and competition from the more affordable Macintosh, and this quickly became Apple's 100 million embarrassment. But here's a twist. This failure paved the way for future innovations like Macintosh and later the iPhone. Sometimes even a flaw can be the foundation for greatness. So Lisa, we salute to you for better or worse. And there you have it. The 10 most expensive tech failures in history, from fire phones to costly Mars missions. These stories remind us that even the biggest names in tech can stumble when ambition outruns execution. Which of these failures surprised you the most? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this look at tech's wildest missteps, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more fascinating deep dives. Thanks for watching, and remember, every failure is just a stepping stone to the next big breakthrough. See you in the next one.